Blaine, you said something earlier today. We put it on social media that, and I know our cold opens are, are mind boggling. This one may take the cake. Yeah, you know, let's really dive deep and figure it out today. It's a Tuesday. I want us to get to the bottom of it. I do too. Okay. Is being born the leading cause of death? Isn't being born, mm. born the leading cause? I mean, it, it would have to, and again, this isn't any to. abortion talk or anything like that. This is just, is being born the leading cause of death? It is. Oh, yeah. People say sure. cigarettes, heart failure, car crashes. Being born. I know, iPhone not working, but uh, it's being born. When I think of the great existential philosophers of the 20th century, I think Sartre, Heidegger, and Blaine Crow. Of course. I mean, you're, you're getting right up, up there. there. Appreciate it, guys. With that kind of thinking? Appreciate it. It's the glasses. It's well, to, me, book. The glasses. to me, when your brain works that way, you're either going one of two ways. Really, really good or really, really bad. The choice is yours. It's a real red so pill. Either that one or can, is it even possible to think about absolutely nothing? That's it. See, now, again, there's, even, there's uh, people who meditate. Know, there's people but, who are up in the, the Alps and all sorts of stuff. I need time to think about know, that monks. one. That, the being born, being the leading cause of death, it has to be the truth. I would think it is. It has to be the truth. Well done. Matt Corral will eventually start for the Panthers this season. We break down tonight's NBA and NHL playoff games, and we reveal our top three opponents for each SEC teams. Oh, and it's Mailbag Monday. On a Tuesday. Hey. Thank goodness it's 2 Central. It's time for Crane <laughs> Company. There was a lot of talk in this year's NFL draft about the lack of elite quarterbacks or, or the lack of the amount of quarterbacks that many of the experts and scouts thought could make big impacts, not only earlier in their career, but throughout their career. We saw the Steelers go get Kenny Pickett. We saw Malik Willis go to the Titans. But the guy in the middle to me, Matt Corral, may have the best chance of making the biggest impact early. And this isn't one of those takes where you just throw something out there. We've been talking about this for a while. We watched Matt at Ole Miss. We watched him grow under the tutelage of Lane Kiffin and Jeff Levy, who's now the OC at Oklahoma while Lane stayed the head coach at Ole Miss. And some quarterbacks just have that it factor. People, Some people call it moxie. People call it awareness, swag, however you want to put it. Matt Corral can do a lot of things. His bag's really deep. He can make the throw on the out. He can throw the whole shot. He can lollipop the screen. He can throw the fastball and the changeup, per se. But what makes Matt Corral different to me is he's not afraid to make any throw, but he also has the wherewithal to have a good feel for what's going on. He can diagnose coverages. He's able to read defenses like a Harry Potter book. And he can run when he has to. Now, he's got to be a lot smarter as a runner in the NFL. And it's amazing how the NFL has a way of teaching guys that. He'll be told before the season starts. But looking in front of him, it's really just Sam Darnold. Not worried about Dylan Cheek or any of these other guys. And Darnold, while he is a good player and has a chance to be a pretty good quarterback, tends to get hurt, tends to struggle sometimes. And all it takes is a little bit of that door opening to give a guy like Matt Corral a chance. Drew Bledsoe goes down, Tom Brady comes in. Now, I'm not saying Matt Corral is going to be Tom Brady, but there's many instances of guys getting injured. The next guy stepping in, and doing really well, and having a chance to take that job. Sam Darnold is not established in the NFL. He's a name that a lot of people know, but it's not like people are banging down the door left and right to get this guy. They really weren't banging down the door left and right to get Matt Corral, and I think that plays to his personality in a way that a lot of people don't understand. I think Matt Corral might as well have an NIL deal with Golden Flake while he was in college. He's got such a big chip on his shoulder. But don't be shocked. If something happens to Sam Darnold, and I hope he does not get hurt, or if he struggles, if Matt Corral gets a chance to go in and steals the hearts and minds of Panthers fans and has a big game. And listen, we can use the old adage, he likes to eat. Well, that's why they call him the Golden Corral. Want to bring in uh, David? Come <laughs> over on Matt Corral. <laughs> yeah, look, yes. And guys, listen, does Malik Willis have a chance eventually for the Titans? I think so, because I don't believe in Ryan Tannehill. He's got to be better at diagnosing coverages. We've gone over that a ton on the show. But Matt Corral could be really, really sneaky. I'm talking about this year. I'm not saying game one. Sam Darnold's going to be the guy. We know that. We understand what the Panthers have around him. But, Cone, if he gets a shot, to me, Matt Corral is one of those guys that if you let him go in there and prove it, 
there's a pretty good chance he'll do it because, like I said, he's got that gunslinger mentality, but he also has great feel. I don't think he's a guy that's going to go out there and take stupid chances, but he will take chances. The reason he was my favorite quarterback uh, in this past class was because of his fearlessness. I think that made him a great quarterback. That can be dangerous in the NFL. So that's what I want to see. Can he still utilize his fearlessness to be athletic and throw on the move while at the same time not putting himself in danger in the NFL? Because that won't fly for long. If I'm Matt Corral, the guy's game I want to emulate is Russell Wilson. You know, someone who can sling the ball around, who can be accurate, but who also can move when he has to. You know, he's not going to be Lamar Jackson. He's not going to be Cam Newton. And he doesn't have to be, and he shouldn't be. I think you want to emulate Russell Wilson be accurate, bide your time here early behind Sam Darnold, and I think you could start the season. Uh, listen, I, I wouldn't put anything past the realm of possibility. And a lot of people say, oh, well, the Steelers uh, got Kenny Pickett. Obviously, that's a guy that they really believe in and taking him to that spot. You got Mason Rudolph, who a lot of people don't believe in. Kenny Pickett is going to have a chance eventually, but I think Matt Corral may grab that chance mm-hmm. more than what Kenny Pickett does. And I'll say this, and a lot of people, I, I don't think Zach Wilson's a bad player. Do I think he's the answer for the Jets? Maybe if the answer is making the playoffs eventually. But I would take Matt Corral over Zach Wilson. And I've said that, and I've said that, and I've said that. I looked at the tape. We had Trey Wingo on here. He was a little concerned about Matt Corral's deep ball. I'm not. You go go back and look at the tape. I mean, the dude's spinning it like Leo DiCaprio in Inception with the dreidel. Blaine, when you look at Matt Corral and you look at this quarterback class, Desmond Ritter, we we know, went to the Falcons. You, You have other guys to talk about. I just think Matt Corral may end up being the best of the bunch. I, th- I don't think you'd be wrong in saying that. I think the quarterbacks in this class were extremely tight. The group of the quarterbacks were extremely tight when it comes to skill level. There wasn't that What do you one, mean tight? Like close together okay. skill level, okay. right? They're, they're clo- there wasn't that one guy who's just head and shoulders over everybody else. I, I don't think there was that guy in this draft. But I do think, barring an injury, I don't think Matt Corral starts this year for the, for the Panthers. Mm. Because if you're the Panthers, you're not, you have a lot of other things you have to worry about to be a good football team. One, you've had one of the worst offensive lines in the NFL. And they went uh, line heavy in this draft. Yeah, the, you, you had like the top, one of the top three worst lines in the NFL. Receiver, you have a young DJ Moore who's going to be a good player. You have Robbie Anderson who's a middle of the vertical back threat. Type of He's a vertical threat. threat. And you have Terrence Marshall Jr. who's going to be a good player. But two of your best receivers are young. All right. And then you go to Christian McCaffrey who can't stay healthy for a full season. He just can't. You can say the same thing about Sam Darnold, but one of the reasons why Sam Darnold's getting so beat up is because the guys in front of him aren't that good. I don't think Sam Darnold's a bad quarterback. I don't think he is either. I'm not saying that. In the first half of that season, he did well, but injuries started to plague the Panthers. Yeah, so that's why when you say barring injuries, I don't think he can stay healthy. for The same what you said about Christian McCaffrey. I don't know if Sam Darnold can stay healthy this season. Yeah, but I don't think Matt Matt Corral, depending on the injury, I don't think Matt Corral comes in and just completely takes the job. Mm. I don't think the Panthers have good enough uh, uh, guys around him for him to come in and just ball out. Mm-hmm. I don't think they have that. I think the Panthers, one, their defense is good but needs to get better. They did go heavy in this draft, but there's a lot of other things the Panthers have to fix yeah. before worrying about Matt Corral being the starting quarterback. And, and I think they did a good job in the draft, and, and I do want to say this. I I don't think it's going to be something where they go into camp and Matt Corral steals the job from Sam Darnold before game one. I want to make that. sure that we understand that. What I foresee happening is one of two things. If Sam Darnold struggles, I know they had some good pickups up front. We, you know, we're pretty excited about some of the guys they got up front. Sam Darnold has struggled to stay healthy. We talked about Christian McCaffrey. I think you're going to see the usage rate go down a little bit for McCaffrey because he's done everything from running the ball to catching the ball out of the backfield. They use him a ton. When he is in the game, he is touching the ball. And, and I understand why, but you've got to be smart for longevity at that position. Sam Darnold will force things. He will force things. Sam Darnold has a little Jameis Winston in him. I'm, I'm, I'm just going to tell you, if you watch, Sam's a, a more pure passer. Well, I think his fundamentals are more pure. But he's a gadget type of guy a little bit. He's, he's kind of an unorthodox playmaker in, when he's in the pocket. I just, when I look at Kenny Pickett, I like Kenny Pickett. Desmond Ritter, I'm not sold on. Malik Willis, he's got a ways to go, but he's got the talent. He's got a ceiling. Matt Corral was the most complete quarterback that came out of this draft to me. Now, am I, am I saying that if he goes in for Sam Darnold, that I think he's going to throw for 500 yards in the first game and six touchdowns? No, but I think you're going to see a spark. I think you're going to see a spark that Panthers fans say, wait a minute, mm-hmm. this guy's legit because he's got that dog in him. We always talk about that dog, right? We always talk about it on the show, and it's a cliche or whatever. Some guys got it. Some guys just have it, and Matt 
has it. It's hard to explain. I don't think he, you talk about fearlessness. I don't think he's afraid of the moment. I don't think he's afraid of it, though. I think he is cut conscious of making stupid decisions, but I don't think that will keep him from trying to make the big play. I can just see it in this man's game. I can see it in his eyes when he talks. I know he feels like he should have gotten more pub going into the draft. You come from a system that can get you ready for the NFL and what Lane Kiffin does from understanding leverage and spacing from the coverages, reading too high, knowing when they're going to spin to one high, reading the leverage of the corners, knowing if they're flat foot at five yards, it's going to be covered too. The little, little things that I think separate him from Malik Willis and then his arm ability, I like better than Kenny Pickett. I think his, his release is quicker. I think he's got more bite on the ball. I think he's got better arm strength. So, I just feel like there's always that guy at this quarterback position that may be a little bit unheralded that comes out and surprises a lot of people or catches your eye in the first, you know, game four or something he comes in. Maybe it's trash duty. Maybe Darnold goes down because they're having struggle blo struggling blocking anybody up front. And then you see that spark and people start to say, wait a minute, this guy may be for real. And he's gotten knocked for Kiffin's system at Ole Miss. I don't understand that. There's I don't either because I, I actually think it'll be a strength because while he won't be running the same system in the NFL or with the Panthers specifically that he did under Kiffin mm -hmm. at Ole Miss, he's still learning from one of the best quarterback gurus and sure. offensive minds. Yeah, in yeah. The and, and a lot of it is terminology too. So exactly. exactly. You're running a different system, but at the end of the day, the defenses are running similar things. So regardless of outside of if you're just a true 100% like Liberty. I know there's some similarities between Ole Miss's and Liberty's offense, but there's also some differences when you look at route combinations and what you're having to look at to find the destination where to throw the ball. Because just because I run a certain style of system on offense, that defense is running cover two. I need to know what that looks like. Mm -hmm. They're running cover three. Are there spinning coverages? Are there buzzing down late? I have to know what that means. Now it's just plugging in the terminology. And we'll move on after this. I'll, I'll just say, just like when I talked about Caleb Williams going from the transfer portal to USC, he doesn't have to learn anything terminology-wise. You're going to the exact same system from a terminology standpoint. Typically, the terminology is the most difficult part when you get to the NFL. You remember John Gruden talk, talking about the plays, having to teach guys how to call in the plays because mm -hmm. they're so long. So I don't put as much into that as other people will put into it. But again, it, it is a point, but I don't think it's as as, as drastic as, as people make it out to be with Two Lane things. Kiffin. One, Matt Corral will force balls. Okay. He did it in Every quarterback forces will, balls. Well, but, Matt, well, you said that you said that about Sam Darnold. Matt Corral will force balls. And two, fearlessness in the NFL can get you in trouble. That's what I said. In trouble extremely quick. Matt you can Corral, play scared then? Matt, I'm not saying that. You play smart. That's you I'm can saying. play fearless and play smart. I understand that. But being too fearless, and Matt Corral wasn't a guy, a guy in college who sometimes tried to do way too much on a certain play and get way too much. Yep. This is the NFL, buddy. It's a lot different. He's going to learn in that system. He, I think he needs to sit maybe a year, maybe two years, and really learn and when he gets ready, he's one of those guys, if I was the Packers, that I would have drafted. That would sit back in a system with a guy in front of him that he can learn from and then go out and get it. This is entirely too, a new thing. It's going to be an entirely new thing for Matt. Not the same system. He's not going to be running as much. I'm just saying he needs to get a lot smarter with the ball. I love his arm talent, and I love his attitude. But it's a lot different from going to college to going to play. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah, everybody knows that. But again, look at who he had last year. Two years ago when he was at Ole Miss, they had dogs out wide. Look at the numbers then. Last year, they had nothing. They lost Elijah Moore going into his last year okay. all right, to the Jets. Who did they have out wide? Who did Ole Miss really have out wide that you looked and said, all right, Matt Corral, don't worry about trying to do too much because you've got all these weapons around you? And he's what? only 50% of the conversation. I mean, the other 50% is Sam Darnold. You know, I mean, if he were sitting behind Aaron Rodgers and the Packers picked him up, that'd be a different Yeah, it's a totally different situation. You know? But let me ask you this. Let's let's do something here. I want to start something. Set that line. Okay. Let's handicap here. Now, you said he won't start at all this season, barring, barring injuries, injuries, barring yes. injuries. But you set this line for me on over under how many games it'll take before Matt Corral could either beat Sam Darnold for the job or takes it over due to injury. Like how many games before he starts a game? Mm -hmm. I'd put the over under at... Seven and a half. <laughs> that's what I have. That's what you have? Yeah, that's exactly what seven I have. Seven and a half? Seven and a half. That's good. We're I had six and a half, page. and I changed it to seven and a half, because I think seven could be a good number. That, uh, What's the Booster yeah. Club say, Blaine? Ooh. Because uh, I know we got Ole Miss fans that agree with me, and everybody else Papa probably Link doesn't. 90 wants to know what star QB will be the biggest bust this year. The uh, star QB it's, that got drafted or just yeah, To me, it's drafted. hard to be a bust when everybody's talking about this class isn't very good. I don't think the expectations outside of yeah. maybe for – Pittsburgh fans for Kenny Pickett, like he's going to come in and save the day. I don't think you're you're going to have a guy to 
you could really consider a bust. I would give you one. I think Desmond Ritter got taken way too early, yeah. and the Falcons made a mistake, especially if you're trying to tank for C.J. Stroud one. or Bryce Young. Yeah. Uh, so I don't know if you can call uh, somebody who wasn't expected to be a star a bust. Bailey Zop. Zap, yeah, yeah. Look, I'm telling you, that's another guy. That's my underrated guy, man. Had the best wonder lick. That's my underrated guy. What else, B? All right, um, all right. We got a not. It's not a question, but it's a comment. I'm gonna read out from Bubby Crane, boys and Cone. Got to say, thank you for making sports exciting for me again. I look forward to the show every day, and I haven't missed one since Appreciate episode it, one. Wow. Thank you, man. I hadn't missed since episode one. That's love. That's OG. Wow. All right. If you thank had to you, rank man. these three quarterbacks, okay, Malik Willis, Kenny Pickett. And Matt Corral. Let's just play bench cut. Yeah, let's play bench cut. All right, I, Malik, Matt Corral, and and Pickett. And Pickett. Okay. Yeah. Who are you going with, Cone? Hmm. I do think that it was a good move for the Steelers to take Pickett. I like that. But I just, I really want to see what Matt Corral does. Like, I'll start him. I'll keep um, Pickett on the bench, and then I'll cut Malik. Even though I think he's coming into maybe the best system where he could sit behind Tannehill on a good team, mm -hmm. and if he takes the reins, at least he'll be on a good ball club. I, I would go Matt Corral. Give me Malik Willis, and then give me Kenny Pickett. I think Malik Willis's ceiling is so high. Mm -hmm. If he can get the middle part of it down, which I know the way he works and the way he grinds, he's going to. I think his ceiling's really high. I think Kenny Pickett will be a good player. I don't think he's going to be the savior for Pittsburgh. It's a great story, but so is Little Red Riding Hood. Blaine, what is the YouTube branch of the Booster Club saying? <laughs> um, Connor Morgan, hashtag Ask Cranico, says, let's say Jalen Hurts takes a step this season of being above average quarterback. What do we think the Eagles' ceiling is? I think, I think they could... I legitimately think they can make it to, to the championship game, the semifinal. I don't know if they're Super Bowl good yet. I so love what they the did. Championship. With, with, yeah, I, I, with, with A.J. Brown, getting him, that was, that was a good move. Um, it was A.J. Brown. I'm not losing my mind, right, Blaine, to the Eagles? Yes. They traded for uh, to, to, to pair up with Devontae Smith. Jalen Hurts, again, he doesn't have to be an elite passer. His running ability, I think he's big enough to take some of those blows. We're, we're talking about Matt Corral doesn't need to take. He's a bigger guy, but you can't make a living off of it. I just don't know if Jalen can do it in those last two games. Can he do it in the NFC Championship game? Can he throw you to a win? Yeah. Can he throw you to a win in the Super Bowl? Because you got to be somewhat balanced. Well, you have to be. It's always been the knock on Jalen Hurts ever since he was in college. He's not that great of a thrower. Lost his job to Tua. Yeah, not a, that great of a thrower or maybe reading defenses. First of all, he's a phenomenal runner. Very anticipatory runner. He knows when to cut. He knows his juke. He's well a smart done. player. And I think, and I go back to the draft, I think Eagles did one of the best teams in the draft, right? You pair Jordan Davis with Fletcher Cox. You got N'Kobe Dean late. And you got A.J. Brown to come over to put on the other side of Devontae Smith. So now you have two weapons. So what does it really come down to? Believe in the defense, especially up front. Fletcher Cox and Jordan Davis, good luck running against that. But it comes down to Jalen Hurts and what he can do against the best quarterbacks in the NFL. Can he win you? those big games. And to me, he doesn't have the arm talent to do that. It comes down to, do the Eagles still have my boy Brandon Graham? BG. And the answer BG. is yes, which means they could win it all. BG. Shout out, BG. Let's yeah, get on the show BG. next we week. We need to get BG on the love show. Love it. What else from the YouTube branch, Blaine? Okay, Deacon and Nora, hashtag Ask Cranico. Knowing the New Orleans Saints drafted wide receiver Chris Olave and now added Jarvis Landry, do you think the Saints can accomplish anything this year? Well, Drew Breesy coming back. <laughs> yeah, look, if 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 Drew Breesy comes back, then I, don't then think, good I think it could get interesting. <laughs> I just don't believe in Jameis the way other people believe in Jameis. I like the moves the Saints have made. I love the homecoming of Tyron Matthew and Jarvis Landry. It's like I said, it's a cool story. But do the Saints have the guy under center? That's what this game comes down to. That's what it comes down to. Eventually, it comes down to the quarterback. You, Bama's the best ever at hiding quarterbacks. They won one with Jake Coker. They won one with Blake Sims. And then I felt like that doesn't work. You're not that much better than the other team. So that doesn't work in the NFL. And I do want to say, our DW branch of the Booster Club, I went over 1,000 comments today. Or I'm going to hold a replacement cone underwater for 10 minutes and see what happens. Whoa. So, Whoa. Tony, that's wow, where it's that at. got dark quick. Yeah, listen. Cry underwater? Who so, knows? Yeah, we're going to find out. <laughs> that is truth. All right, Riot highs with the question, when do the Cowboys need to replace Dak Prescott? D uh, did you mean to say Jerry Jones? Yeah. <laughs> Again, uh, uh. This is a road that, that will continue. Him. Will continue to go down as we get closer to the NFL season. But Dak Prescott is on my list of overrated quarterbacks in the NFL. They already paid him. That's He's, the thing. They've already paid him. They already paid Zeke. I, I I know. The Cowboys are just in a situation where Dak's got to do it. Yeah. He's got to blossom. Could he? Yes. But from what I've seen, and he's had some big games, and there are a lot of problems. The Cowboys have had problems on defense, staying healthy, especially at the linebacker position. Poor Sean Lee. The guy gets hurt a ton. The Cowboys have a lot of problems. That's not just Dak. But again, Dak, to me, is not a Super Bowl-winning quarterback. 
And I'm not the only one that thinks that way. Am I a Cowboys hater? No. But do I think the Cowboys are similar to the University of Texas in which, you know, you have your big bad guys like Jerry Jones and other guys actually making decisions that probably the coaches should make? Yes. Do I think Mike McCarthy is a great coach for the (laughs) Cowboys? No. Do I think Aaron Rodgers made Mike McCarthy look a lot smarter than what he was? Yes. So do I believe the Cowboys? No. Do I believe in Dak Prescott? No, I don't. That's interesting because I actually think Mike McCarthy is a good coach there, a good fit there. I don't Um, like the fit. I I just, if Mike McCarthy can't get it done there, we have to start asking some questions. I mean, the the questions are already asked. I mean, David, look at the Cowboys. What have they won? It'll be good when the the coach starts winning. They did win three Super Bowls under Jerry Jones. You know, so the but argument, when's the last oh, one? You know how Cowboys done. fans are. There, no, I get it. You're only as good as the last one, and that like that was when we were what seven years old. I understand that, but it's not like they didn't haven't won any Super Bowls under Jerry Jones. So they have done it at the highest level with Jimmy Johnson, and I just I think Mike McCarthy can win a Super Bowl there. I just think it's a Dak problem. So you think it's more of a Dak problem than a Mike McCarthy? Problem. I think so. Okay, I mean I can understand that. that. That's I mean that's a logical argument. But you want to get into punter go? Let's do it. Let's do it. Look, the playoffs, the playoffs Playoff. have been good to us. The playoffs have been good to us. Let's start with Heat Celtics on the hard court. Yep. We were mind mouthing earlier. We were to come up with this that one. Was a, we had a moment. to come up with this one. Moment. To let, hit you with this. Let, let, let Here's me what it is. Oh, go ahead. Or you want to guess no, it? No, go ahead. You okay. go ahead. Jimmy Butler will outplay Jason Tatum in this series. Punt or go. That's a good one, Cody. Remember, really if you're punting down deep for this one, you don't agree with it. If you're, I am for it. going to punt. Jason Tatum, look, Jimmy's got killer in him, but Jimmy's also got a lot of crazy in him. Same guy that almost fought Eric Spoelstra he did before the that. playoffs, which you know, <laughs> some people say sometimes it brings a team together. And I, I think Jimmy's mid-range game is nasty. I mean, he's as athletic as it, as it gets. But Jason Tatum is a quiet assassin. Has there been games where Jason Tatum hasn't played great? Of course, there's been games where everybody hadn't played game. Great. But look what he just did in game six. Look what he just did. Uh, when you watch when it matters, Jason Tatum shows up. When you watch when it matters, Luka shows up. Mm. And guys, let's not forget, this is a rematch from the 2020 Eastern Conference Finals in the bubble. Mm. He won that one 4-2. I believe the Celtics have been to three Eastern Conference Finals with the core of Jason Tatum, and Marcus Smart and Jalen Brown. Hmm. And they've and they lost all three. Won one of them. Gotcha. So these well, they guys, were two up on LeBron. They, these guys, these guys have almost been there. Mm-hmm. I think that experience is going to be key. Another thing about this regular season, Celtics two one over the Heat. Nothing crazy. I won't put much stock into that. Here's what I'm gonna put a bunch of stock into. Kyle Lowry's not playing because of a hamstring, and it's a lot different when you're the Heat playing the Sixers as opposed to you're the Heat playing the Celtics. What was the one thing that Kyle Lowry brought to the Heat? He could speed him up a little bit, right? When they had to play fast, which the Heat don't like to play fast, but when he got there, they started playing fast and they were a little more devastating. But when there were times where they had to play fast, when they had to get on the offensive side and start scoring and get in transition and get the rebound and get out, who was leading that charge? It was Kyle Lowry. Mm -hmm. Kyle Lowry is not there. They're going to slow the game down. Guess who else can play really, really well in a slow-paced game? The Celtics. They're almost built for it. When you look at the way they are defensively, it's interesting to see how Robert Williams is going to be. I know, I know, uh, Tice has been in there; he's been okay. But I think this matchup favors the Celtics a lot more. I know it sounds obvious without Kyle Lowry for the Heat, but not because of scoring, because of pace. Just watch that. The Celtics can win a 97-94 mm-hmm. game. They can win a 95-92 game. But the Heat have to have Tyler Hero show up off the bench, which he has. Jimmy Butler's going to get his. Bam, down low. Can he control the front court? Interested to see that? I don't think so. Uh, what, what is the status on Kyle Lowry? Kyle, yeah, for the whole Hampton, Kyle barely played one game. Yeah, he's not. I, I, I wouldn't Hampton be shocked if you didn't like see him minutes. in this series. Hey, Kyle's not probably not coming back. And I don't uh, think the Heat really In the whole series? Him. Okay. Yeah, I don't even think the Heat need. I think they need him a lot both, more for the Celtics both than these the Sixers. teams are one of the, the two best teams when it comes to defense in the league. Mm-hmm. Heat, phenomenal defensive team. Celtics, phenomenal defensive team. But what is it, fourth and two? Hey, we're going to go on this one. I'm going on this one. I'll tell you why. The difference to me is Jalen Brown. Jalen, Jimmy Butler doesn't have a Jalen Brown on his team. Mm -hmm. There are two superstars, realistically, on the Celtics. 
And Jalen will sometimes take that success away from Jason Tatum. That's okay. why Jason Tatum doesn't score as many as a certain game. And Jason's Jim, fine with that. Yeah, that's fine. We're, uh, but this I'm saying, Jimmy Butler, for them to win this series, is almost have to ball every game. Every game, maybe 30-plus a game. He is that guy on this team on both sides on both sides of the court, defensively and offensively. Tyler Hero, great player. Don't know if you can trust him every game. He's a pure shooter. Jimmy can get to the paint, get He's the to creator. end ones. He's starting to shoot the three better, has a great mid-range game. For me, Jimmy Butler has to outplay Tatum for this series to win yeah. it. And I don't think Tatum has to go ball out to win this series because you have a Jalen Brown, you have an Al Horford, you have experienced guys on that team. Let so I think there's more weight on Jimmy's shoulders to go out and ball than Jason Tate. Well, I'll say this. Max Struess has been playing out of his mind yeah, for the Heat. Deep. P.J. Tucker has been the quiet leader and the guy that's sitting in the corner and absolutely Well, yeah, well, Jimmy Buckets dropped 35-plus. Jimmy's 40. the creator. Jimmy's a creator. But when he has struggled at times, you've seen Max Struess go nuts. We've seen, got like Grant Williams for the Celtics, mm. is, is somewhat similar to what you're seeing in the role player peripheral, even though Grant is starting to elevate himself from a role player. That's what's so fascinating about this series. Which role players are going to step up the most? Grant Williams, you dropped 27 in Game 7, you're proving it to everybody. T uh, Tyler Hero coming off the bench, I know you're sixth man of the year, that is a role. You are a role player. P.J. Tucker, that to me, those storylines are what's going to separate the series. Because you talk about how tight the draft was with the quarterbacks, this game and talent-wise, these two teams, you talk about defense. Defensive, there's a reason that over unders at 204. Yeah, it's gonna be a fist fight. And typically when it's a fist fight, it's the role players throughout a seven game series that can notch you that extra one or two wins, steal you that yeah, one on the road. Both these teams can win a low scoring game. Uh, for sure. That's what's gonna make it fascinating. And I would love to see a defensive struggle in the NBA. I like Celtics in six. Ooh, well, listen, yeah, I like Celtics man. in six. You're not crazy for that. Let's move to the ice. Lightning Panthers, the battle for the Sunshine Woo! State, boys. This series will go seven. Pun or go? I'm going to go because why not? Why Every not? other one's gone seven, basically. And I, th some really cool storylines uh, around this one. One, the Panthers are 0-18 on the power play, gentlemen. That's unacceptable. That's at the bottom of NHL history. I think Winnipeg was 0-28 for 28 one time, and there was one more. That's disgusting. On the flip side, the Lightning are the best in the league at scoring on, on power plays at 21.3%, but the Lightning don't have Braden Point. And anytime your last name is Point, they're going to have to rely on you offensively. Mm. He's out. He got hurt in Game 7. That's going to be a big miss for them. They need Stamkos to step up. But this is, the, this is the fourth time ever in the history of the NBA, the NFL, and the NHL that we've had an all-Florida team match up in the playoffs. It's, it's pretty cool, especially this far. I just think it's one of the most ironic things in the sport that probably the best series going in hockey right now is between <laughs> two teams from Florida. I tell you what, what can Florida not do? You got the craziest people <laughs> on the planet. You got the best seafood, in my opinion. Sorry, Maine. You've got the best beaches, and you've got the best hockey teams. Look, it goes back to the little SEC. I mean, you can say with SEC all the time. <laughs> it has nothing to do <laughs> with the, the SEC. <laughs> the South wants to be good at something when it comes to sports. We're going to be good at it. It's just unbelievably ironic to me. You're like I, Walter Sobchak in The Big Lebowski. Uh, I, about <laughs> Vietnam with you. I, I do think this is going to be a hell of a series, but I'll go back to what I said last series. Lightning, when it came down to it, what was the difference from the Lightning to the Leafs in game seven, I think it was experience. Mm. I think it was experience. The Panthers, you have the president's trophy winner mm -hmm. against the two-time defending yeah. NHL champions. I'll take the two-time defending NHL champions right now. Yeah. But again, remember, what are the series? They're two, two, one, one, one. Mm -hmm. So you'll have two in two uh for the Panthers. Then you go back to Tampa, which isn't that far of a, a trip mm -hmm. for the Lightning. Then you go one, one, one. So where's the last game at? at the Panthers. Yeah, no. So if it's going Game 7, the Lightning just won a Game 7 on the road. Yeah. Again, it's Florida, so it's really not that much of a road game for you. I think the Lightning will win the series due to experience. And we can go ahead and make our futures, like who we think is going to win. I thought of all the teams that advanced from the first round, the Panthers were the most underwhelming in their performance. Yeah. And as much as I've been saying, as hard as it is to win two in a row like the Lightning have done, it's even harder to win three in a row. At some point, you have a bullseye on your back, and that's going to lead to them being yeah. upset. But look what they just did last series. So at this point, I feel like you'd have to take the Lightning. As you a do. Guy. The Panthers are disappointing, and I'd so, go, so I'd go, the I'd go Lightning in six. You go Lightning I'm in six. I'm going Lightning six. Well, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter what the sport is. Defense will always travel. Mm. Lightning is a phenomenal defensive team. Their goalie is extremely good. The goalie for the Panthers has been underwhelming at best. They're supposed to beat Caps in realistically five games. 
Uh, and they didn't. Lost first game at home. I mean, the, the Panthers, I mean, I believe they split with the Lightning 2-2 in the regular season. The Lightning, I'm telling you, their defense and their experience. Panthers, a bunch of young guys. They're, I mean, the Lightning are back-to-back, back-to-back champs. And I would go, I know their best players out, but there's it's one of those John ja Morant Grizzlies situations. Jaws out, but the Grizzlies are pretty good. And the <laughs> Lightning was one of their best players out. They're still a really good hockey team. As long as that over hits. All yeah, right, yeah, last one. one more God, quick one. Last one. Avs and Blues. The Blues will steal at least one game in Colorado before returning to St. Louis. Punt or go? Coach, it's fourth and three. What are we doing? Hold on. Hey, hey, punt alert. Punt alert. We're putting this one. We're putting this (laughs) one. All right, Avs. They've been hotter than Hansel at the Male Model Awards lately. We were shocked by the Panthers. Like, we just talked about losing the Caps game one. The only thing that concerns me a little bit, Cone, is that the Avs were the only team to sweep. Yep. So they've had a lot of time off, mm-hmm. but I'm not going to punish you for whipping somebody's ass. Mm-hmm. So I think the What's Avs team? protect... Preds. We'll see. Are, Commit are we Thursday. committing I'm committing week? Thursday. We're we committing gotta get Thursday, I, actually, I, got, I got asked on Twitter to open we're, my recruiting, so my... Well, we'll get to yours. Open. I've got to it's commit on Thursday. We're, we're going to make a graphic. We are going to hit the Booster Club super hard when Yankees? we get back. Yankees? Is that what you're going with? Yankees? 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 For a hockey team? You can be, the av- you no, can be an Avs fan. That'd probably you? be your answer. I'll probably be a, uh, you know, God, you know, it's hard not to be a Canes fan after seeing those uniforms. Wow. But, you know, I go still, I, we'll see. We'll see where the NIL deals land. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. I, I, we'll see where I go. Look, but I, mean, I can see the Blues maybe stealing one, but just make sure you don't steal. Game two. Yeah, yeah okay. game two. Blues will win game two. We'll get to bed. Yeah. So we're going to get to the Booster Club really, really uh, in-depth. want to get y'all's thoughts on that. And, man, I cannot wait for this next this segment when we get back. If you want to watch or listen to the rest of the show, so everybody on YouTube, listen. All right. You can head over to The Daily Wire. You still got the audio on YouTube as well. But head over to The Daily Wire, become a member. Listen on Apple, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcast. Subscribe, leave a five-star review, and share it with the people you dislike the most. It may just bring y'all closer. Blaine, yes. the Daily Wire branch of the Booster Club. What's right. popping in the office? B, uh, BJPS 09XU13 with a question for us guys. How do we think the Avs will play after having an extended layoff? That's what I was saying. I think they'll be fine. Look, uh, again, the Avs, to me, we know about consistently consistency. I get the Panthers won the President's Trophy during the regular season, but you still got to feel like the Abs are the best team in hockey right now. Mm-hmm. You've got to. I don't think the momentum stops just because they swept the Preds. Mm-hmm. Uh, again, you, you get to rest up a little bit. You're not going to forget how to play hockey. You may see it in the first 10 minutes of the first period. That's why I would caution against you know, being too wild on the first period. I know Minnesota's out of it, but... Uh, when you look at the abs. So you may see it a little bit there, but I think, again, once they get on the ice, you know, that they, they get plugged into the matrix and all of a sudden they start remembering. There's a rest or rust, you know, yeah. question yeah. that always gets asked. And to me, the avalanche don't seem like the type of team that gets rust. Yeah, and it's cold, so it wakes you up. Because for some reason, Facts. more and more I look at this, it's starting to smell like a trap game, and I hate it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, Bubby here says the abs will destroy the Blues. I hope you're right. Um, 4YHWH says, I hate three-peats, go Panthers. Daily Hater says Hansel's so hot right now. He is. He's hot <laughs> as a potato. He's a hot little potato right now. Um, do we see the Abs finish this in five or six games? I like it. Uh, give me five. Give me five. I I'll think they win two at home. I think they take one on the road and come back and win uh, game five. I'll go six. I think the Blues get one on the road and one at home. Oh, wow. And, uh, Nate Dog says he likes the Cowboys, but no one likes the Yankees. Well, guess what, Nate Dog? I do. Nate Dog, that's why. And the boys are hot right now. The boys are hot. It's May, Nate. It's May. It's May. Everybody's hot. All right. Well, not the Braves. Um, Shamgar's Ox God. Question for the boys. If there was a temperature joke. If there was a reason to not watch a sporting event, what would that be? If there was a reason not to watch a sporting event? (laughs) Yes. I'll keep my mouth shut. Um, (laughs) Don't be scared, David. I'll I'll keep my mouth shut. I would say if there was a reason not to watch a sporting event is because it's a consolation game. Mm. You watch NIT? Mm. I mean, it, to get NIT. me I through. NIT. I, yeah, yeah. I mean, because I bet on it. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I'm not like, oh, man, Vandy and Belmont. Let's go, boys. You're not watching the bronze winner situation in the Olympics, say. No. I, I don't want to watch the the who's going to finish fourth in curling. <laughs> I want to see who's taking home the gold because that's all that matters. Yeah, we should go curling, though. 
We should go do curling and. I just rather play shuffleboard and like drink a beer or something. Okay. Same thing, just in a All cooler right. place. Shuffleboard yeah, is curling I don't on the beach. Yeah, it's a terrible yeah. idea. We, we should have done that. Shuffleboard is curling on the beach. Yeah. Shouldn't even have brought it up. <laughs> All right, Jay Babgo, 2000, hashtag ask crane. God, it sounds like a vacuum to me. I don't know why. Yeah. Hashtag ask crane and company. If you put a sticker on replacement cone, does he become a helmet? Number one. We got to get past it. The existentialism. We got to get past this. That, that's, that's deep. I actually need time to think about that, Jay Bags. And he said, and he said, I think he took back what he said about my Christopher Walken impression, which I'm very, very happy. He rescinded that critique? He rescinded that critique. Good. I believe he did. This is quite good. Speaking about critiques, though, guess what day it is? Hey. It's Mailbag Monday. On a Tuesday. Hi and boy, do we have a great place to start. We promised you this. So we talked last week as we're, as we're inching closer toward football season about how there should be no divisions mm -hmm. inside of a conference. Not saying Division One, Division Two, and FCS, but inside of a conference. So, for example, the SEC East and the SEC West. There should not be an East and a West. It should just be the conference. You get three permanent rivals, and then you play everybody through a four-year career mm -hmm. at home and on the road. So we're going to get matchups like Georgia and A&M that we haven't seen in forever, really. And there's some more that we haven't seen. You're going to start creating new matchups. So we decided... What if we just pick the three permanent rivals for all the SEC teams? We're going to do this for the SEC. We're going to do it for the Big Ten as well. Um, you know, you've, again, the, the Big 12 had already scrapped it, so we don't have to do yeah. that <laughs> for the Big 12, even though they're adding new teams. But the three permanent rivals for each SEC team. And where you think we're wrong, this was a collective effort by our three minds. We put them together to make one mega genius mind to come up with this. Here's what we got. We're going to go in order. Please, Booster Club, YouTube Branch, Daily Wire Branch, Tell us where we got it wrong, where we got it right. Alabama, there are three permanent rivals. Auburn, Tennessee, and LSU. Got to have Auburn in there because the Iron Bowl. Pretty simple. Duh. Tennessee, one of the oldest rivalries there is, even though Alabama has dominated that rivalry, They've like dominated. Bigfoot playing against a little person. They've dominated a lot of things. And then LSU. Alabama-LSU is such a great mm -hmm. rivalry. It is. Some of the best college football games I've ever seen. 9-6, that ring a bell? That, that those games, oh. Alabama does. You want to know why? Because they always have the best athletes around. When those two teams play, it is a semi-pro game. Is sounds what like, it is. If you were watching that game, it sounds like a gun range. It does. Pop, 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 pop. Grown man running around, hitting each other. Basically, NFL players playing with each other. It's. I, I don't. I don't know another way to slice it. So let's go. Let's go to the next one. Auburn. Oh. Got to have Bam in there, right? Got to have Georgia in there, Deep South's oldest rivalry, uh, and Ole Miss. Great. Because why the hell not? Great. And listen, <laughs> Auburn has the hardest schedule this year. We have the hardest schedule every year. So you got to have Bama and Georgia in there. The third one was kind of choose from a couple. You could say Mississippi State. Some people have said Florida before. I think you could get the Florida game. You can't give Auburn, Alabama, Georgia, and Florida. Mm, I mean, you might tough. as well just take them out back and blindfold them and shoot them while they're tied up to a post. Even though right now Ole Miss is better than Florida. True. They are, but don't sleep on Billy Naps. I'm not sleeping on him. Yeah, I mean, that statement. Don't take, take naps nap. on Billy. I'll take a nap. That just, <laughs> yeah. wow, that one, that one came full circle. All right, let's go next one. Arkansas, A&M, love this game. Texas, duh. Some people say Oklahoma. I'm going Missouri. And I get it, guys. Arkansas and LSU is a rivalry, but we can't make everybody happy the yeah. way the math works out. Somebody's going to be upset. But that's why it's great that now everybody plays everybody. You can pencil them in on the schedule as well and get that game. Because what you're going to see by having the three permanent rivals, and we'll get to this as we get through the graphics and some of these other teams, you're creating new rivalries. Y'all good with that one? Yes. Yeah, like All right, that. let's go to the next one. Florida. Tennessee. Florida. Duh. Georgia. It's the cocktail party. Mm -hmm. Let me say it again. It's the world's largest cocktail party. When we stopped calling it that, we got a little worse. Like when we stopped calling the Red River uh, Shootout and we started calling it the Red River Rivalry. That's not what it is. It's a Red River Shootout. It's a shootout because neither one of those teams can stop each other. <laughs> True and then that. Kentucky for Florida. Why not? I like those. Good fits. I think good. those are good, good fits. Fit. Next one. Georgia. Auburn. Mm -hmm. Again. Florida. For the same reason. Mm -hmm. South Carolina. I like South Carolina. South Carolina's given Georgia some trouble. Oh, yeah. Even under Muschamp. Your thing, right? That used to be the, the opening game of the SEC for Georgia when I was growing up. I, I don't know if it's still at the top of that list every year. I mean, I know it moves around, but that's a good game to me. It, I, I think it's a good fit, and I love the fit with Beamer now at South Carolina. I think he's going to make them a lot more relevant, a lot quicker than a lot of for people sure. think. All right, let's move along. 
Kentucky. This is a tough one. This was yeah. harder. This was tough. Mississippi State. Yep. Yeah. Florida. Yep. And Vandy. Congrats, Kentucky. There you go, Mark Stoops. We were going to give Vandy <laughs> like Kentucky's main rival. I mean, football. well, Louisville. Florida to me, Louisville, Louisville out of the conference. Louisville out of the conference, know, but, but but Florida in the conference is what I would think. Florida, I think Florida in the conference, right? That's that's where I would go. Kentucky fans tell us if we're wrong, but we had to to give Vandy somebody. We were going to give them, you know, some FCS teams as a joke, but it screwed up the math. Next graphic: LSU, Bama, A and M, and Ole Miss. And again, yep. like I said, no Arkansas. I get it. They can play outside of that. I think those three fit. Next one. Mississippi State, Kentucky, as we mentioned, Ole Miss, and Mizzou, the two M schools. Let's get it. Let's get after it. I like it. Does, is, is there any reason that Missouri and Mississippi State should be permanent rivals? No, but we just made one. Is there any reason they shouldn't be playing? That's an even better question. Right now with where we're at, Blaine, what's the Booster Club saying? Do, do they think we're way off base here? No, not a lot of way off base. Um, I, believe, uh, I got some... No, why not Georgia? No Georgia, Alabama, but not Georgia. So I don't know where exactly which one it was. It might have been on the Georgia one. We didn't have Georgia playing Alabama as a main. Mm-mm. No, no. You can't do that. You can't do that. We're not giving Georgia, Auburn, Florida, and Bama for the same reason we're not giving Auburn, Georgia, Bama, and mm-hmm. Florida. We're, we're trying to even it out somewhat. All right, so Missouri, Arkansas, Mississippi State, Oklahoma makes an appearance. Little Mizzou, Oklahoma. I like it. Drink versus Venables. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I love where their head's at. Uh, Blaine, anybody anybody crazy on the Missouri train here? Um, not really. Uh, they like the Bama choices. Vanderbilt, Ole Miss. Um, McCarthy Ryan says Vanderbilt needs Ole Miss, Tennessee, and a season over at, at 500. <laughs> Very true. What's that? Look at the YouTube branch. What are they saying? Because I know there's a lot of SEC fans in there that are probably freaking out. Uh, let's go to the next graphic. Ole Miss, Mississippi State. Egg Bowl. Get it. It's egg yeah. Bowl. Auburn, as we mentioned, and LSU. That's a good three. That's a good three. That's a strong three for Lane Kiffin. I have no problem there. I've got no problem at all with that. What? Uh, let's go to the next one as we get toward the end. Oklahoma. This is where it got fishy at the end, you know, adding the two teams. Texas. Have to. Have to. South Carolina. Think about that. Just think about that. Spencer Rattler goes from where? Oklahoma, Oklahoma to, South to South Carolina. Shane Beamer really goes from where? Oklahoma. Oklahoma to South Carolina. Could we start a new rivalry? I hope so. I know South Carolina has Clemson, but why not add, add Oklahoma? Raise that profile, man. Mm-hmm. And then Missouri, you know, regionally, regionally. makes sense. But at some point, there. some teams have to travel. That's exactly right. Well, I mean, in the East, we had, uh, think about it, in the West, we had Auburn yeah. and Alabama and Missouri. And Missouri in the was so in make the that make sense yeah. to me first. All right, a couple more. South Carolina, Oklahoma, as we mentioned, Georgia, and Vandy. Mm-hmm. Think that's clean. 100% clean right there. All right, next one. Tennessee, Bama, Florida, and Vandy. Just makes sense. That's a good schedule. And then Tennessee and Vandy get to have a little in-state rivalry. That's that's exactly right, which Tennessee's struggling to beat them in anything but football right now, but who's not? Let's go to the next one. Texas, Oklahoma, Arkansas, and a and I know Texas fans are going to be like, you guys screwed us on this one. I know that's that's somewhat of a murderer's row with what Sam Pittman's doing in Arkansas, but it is what it is. They Welcome to, to the Oklahoma. league. Welcome to the SEC. Welcome party. to the league. Well, hold on. You have to play Oklahoma. Yep. You have to play Texas A&M, mm-hmm. and then Arkansas just makes sense. It just so, it does make sense. Welcome home. Yeah. It's like, like, like prison. you got to punch the How biggest guy on the first day. How much fun is that going to be every year? I cannot wait. I just want to see us. this Texas-Texas A&M rivalry. Get it's going to be epic. Beat it up. And speaking of epic, epic will. We'll get to that. All right, is that it? Is that the last one there? All right, A&M. LSU, Arkansas, Texas. Easy. Mm -hmm. Easy. Everybody good? Everybody good? Next one. Vanderbilt. We'll close it out with this. Who cares? No shot. And better luck next year. No, it's Tennessee, (laughs) Kentucky, and South Carolina. Three losses for Vanderbilt. Thanks for playing, guys. We had to put you on here. I have to be the, the, the Vanderbilt fan on the show. You, you do. Vandy Golf in regional. Vandy right Golf, now, boys. Hey, hey, listen, shout out Gator. SEC Champs. Great. Shout out Gator. SEC Love Champs that. right now. Love that. Also, shout out to Evan McCarville for sending us yes. his SEC list. That got us thinking on this, and we put out, and that's why we came up with ours. His was pretty good, though. His was pretty his good, was pretty and we good. make though, a, a picture of that out, too. Blaine, Booster Club. All right, Jack72 again says, dude, where's my car? Missouri over LSU for Arkansas rivalry? When you're the head coach in Arkansas, you have two jobs. Get us to a bowl game and beat LSU. Battle of the boot. 
Mm. Okay, so tell so, so let me ask you this. Would you want us to add LSU over Missouri for how you guys are going to do this year? What we didn't want to do was overload Arkansas th- three people. We, we didn't want to overload a team with three dominant teams. The, the team that probably got the worst of it is Texas when you look at the three teams that you got. But but you're going to get those games because you're adding a ninth conference game. Don't forget that. They're going to add a ninth conference game, both the teams coming over. So you should still get that LSU and Arkansas one. And just because you have permanent rivals doesn't mean you're not going to play some Every of the other rivals year. that you have. Yeah. You know, so I wouldn't freak out about it too much, but I understand your point. All right, Grez says, do the ACC next time too. And he loves the segment. Thank you. We'll I think it's a great ACC segment. Then, yeah. It was a lot of fun. All right, one more, Blaine. Uh, Daily Hater says, LSU Texas is a decent matchup. OU and LSU aren't exactly friends either. That's what I'm saying. Think about all these games that we're, we're, listen, we are going to get some of the coolest matchups that we have ever seen in conference. You don't even got to go outside to get the food. It's going to be brought, it's a DoorDash situation. I'm sitting at the house watching great games, matchups I never thought we'd see. That's why I'm so pumped about Texas and Oklahoma coming to the conference, and we will do the so ACC. So let, uh, let me ask you, if and Big know, Oklahoma and Texas are moving to the SEC, but what if they have a rivalry game with someone in their old conference, like Oklahoma, Oklahoma State? Can't, can't play it. They're not going to play it. I'm not scheduling Oklahoma State with a nine-game M conference schedule with those three teams as my permanent rivals. Which, that's the one hard part. That's why they part. abandoned Oklahoma State. That's why the, the uh, Oklahoma State fans feel like they've been abandoned. By yeah, them. well, there, and I've seen OU fans that are like, we want to make sure, and I don't mean to be disrespectful Oklahoma State, that little brother's okay hmm. leaving. Because, again, the Big 12, the profile for the Big 12, from a brand standpoint, is taking a huge hit. Oklahoma that, has a little brother, too? They do. Yeah, well, maybe they can beat theirs. Y'all did last year? No, we didn't. That was the only game we lost. Some of Ohio State? Michigan State. Oh, Michigan State. State. Michigan yeah, State I forget about that. I forget about that with Mel Tucker. Don't believe me. I think they're going to underachieve this year. But let's get let's get uh, to the rest of the mailbag. Mailbag from Seth. Yes, I'm late to the party, but what are your thoughts on this lineup? Talking about our NBA draft that we had. Gary Payton at the point. Michael Jordan at two. Scottie Pippen, three. Dennis Rodman, four. And Hakeem Olajuwon at center with Dirk coming off the bench. So basically the Bulls with the Gary Bulls Payton with and Hakeem Olajuwon. The Bulls with Gary and Hakeem Olajuwon. I don't think you could go wrong. The thing I like about the Gar- Gary Payton play is while Gary Payton was a scorer, there's a reason they called him the glove. Yeah. Because he'd shut you down on defense. I mean, and you have MJ, who's one of the best defensive players we've seen, with Gary Payton at the one and the two. It's lockdown city. Throw away the key. Welcome to Osgobon series. That's a good team. And my team would slaughter yours. I think this my team would slaughter him. I like my team, too, team. still. I like my team. I think he went heavy on the Bulls a little bit when you're looking at all time. But I really like the Hakeem Olajuwon pick, which Hakeem was going to be my center if I didn't get Shaq first. I, mean, I, I think, almost going to take Hakeem, then I'm with Kareem. Yeah, I, I like both those picks. All right, next one from Joshua here. Just a comment that your show is the best on all of Daily Wire really? and sports. Ooh. So there's really nowhere to go. From first here. off, so I'm going to retire. Yeah. Yes, right. and call your in. check's we'll, in the mail. Call it in. From Alex, hey guys, love the show. I have two questions. Okay. Uh, what do you guys all right, well, let's just, oh, let's just start with Aaron Boone here. If Aaron Boone can't manage the Yankees to a World Series, will he get another contract extension? So he is on contract until 2024, and the club has an option for 2025. Knowing the way the Yankees operate, and again, not knowing how far they went, would they lose in a World Series with Aaron Boone there? I think it would depend on how far they went in the playoffs, but New York is not very patient. We know that. We know the family that runs that organization is not very patient when it comes down to it. So I would not be shocked either way. But if they make it to the World Series or something crazy happens, you know, in the ALCS or something, they make it both years and then some, I think Boone will get extended. If they fall flat on their face in one of the years heading up to 2024 without making a big bang the next year, I think they'll move on from him. But I do think Aaron Boone has a good chance to do that. Sign him, sign Judge. I'm a big Aaron Boone guy. I believe in Aaron Boone. Really? Uh, I think it's a good fit. A lot better than Mike McCarthy in Dallas. This is a good one here from Max Johnson. What up, Crane and Company? I Uh, want to know, what is your earliest sports memory? I'll tell you mine. Uh, I was nine years old. We were playing at Felton Little. And it was a practice, and one of the kids on my team, his name was Taylor, I won't say his last name, his dad was very high up in the police department in Auburn, uh, so we were all somewhat cognizant of that, even at eight, nine years old. And I hit a foul ball, crushed it, but it was fouls, right hand, and I yanked it, and absolutely destroyed his windshield, and I thought he was going to take me to jail. Mm, that's really? Tough. That's tough. Um, I'm going to go with, um, I have a couple, but I'm going to go with this one. Um, I won the Home Run Derby in the World Series when I was 10. 
with my dad pitching to me. You have to remember something before you were 10, though. Nah, I mean, other than just, like, little football things, you know? Like, memories that I'm, like, like are kind of, like, visible in my mind where I can would, know how I felt when it happened. Yeah, it'd be either that or before that when I was on a rec league that my dad coached, and we went 13-0. and That was hilarious. We went 13-0 and, and gave up one touchdown at the last game. We went 56-7. to And it was kind of funny the way we went about it. One, we had a pretty stacked team. My dad did well picking. Um, two... You know, it, it, you're the age where you get the little kids out there. You bring the clipboard for most teams. Mm-hmm. You're like, you need to stand here and you run here. You do this and you do that. The other team would do that, and we'd be on defense. And we'd look over my dad. He'd be like, "Cool, razor." He had bite, these kids go again. My dad coached in the SEC, yeah. he played in the NFL. He's yeah. going against dads who are like, no offense, but like in accountants and insurance yeah. agents. They're trying to get they, my but my dad. Taxes. They were corner blitzing. They were cat firing on ten year olds. They were running trick plays. They had one play. Kid named Kevin, they called it Special K. Okay. You couldn't figure out where the ball was. Two for two. Trying to win or not? Like, no, you know? like, we gave really up one touchdown about what the I whole said. year. We played a 13 game season. We gave up one touchdown in the championship game. <laughs> Zach McNutt gave it up, and I still give him crap about it to this day. On the last drive of that game, we won like 56 to 7. Wow. I think my earliest sports memory was probably T ball. Okay, you remember T ball? Yep. All right. Everybody chased the ball. I went up there and I hit the ball, you know, and then I just stand at home plate. I mean, my dad didn't explain the strategy of baseball to me. You've got to run. Before. So he's shouting at me to run after I've hit it. And then I did, and I got to first, and, and, uh, and I was safe, and it was a single. And I'm like, okay, I've got it from here. Yeah, now for sure. I know. Yeah. You know, we didn't explain the strategy beforehand, but he did shout it from me from the, from the bleachers. Listen, and then from there. Trial by fire, man. From there, I'm like, hey. Well, you know, what's the cost of a six-pack and what's the... What's That's the a course ball, record. Ball it's like how they record. taught me how to swim. My dad threw me in the pool. Also, Max did share this. He said, my earliest memory was when I was nine, getting to go to can- uh, getting to go see the Niners game with my dad at Candlestick, uh, Candlestick Park. I can still hear oh, the old man. lady sing- sitting next to me cussing up a storm because the Niners were losing <laughs> to the Titans so badly. <laughs> That's good stuff. That's good stuff. We got one more? Uh, I have, yeah, I have one more here from Chris Sampson. What do small market baseball teams need to do to compete consistently? Example, Royals, Pirates, et cetera. Well, the Royals did win a World Series, but I see what you're talking about consistently. To me, you you have to thread the needle. It's as simple as that. It's not as easy. That's why when you look at like what Milwaukee's done, getting a star and building it around that star is the recipe for a lot of success in professional leagues. We know that. But there are levels to it. There are different markets. There are better opportunities and better resources at other places. It's like sometimes Alabama's got better resources than Southern Miss. It's just how it is. It's how the chips are dealt. So to me, getting a star, finding your Giannis, obviously, and building it around him to keep building exposure and putting yourself to the top of the brands for a while to almost get yourself out of that relegation as a small market team, even though technically, from a size standpoint, you're considered a small market. They say small market with big dreams, you need a big time player. I still think a hard spending cap rather than the flexible cap and luxury tax. It will, but they're not going to. Some people say that, I had some guy tell me that, no, that actually hurts small market teams. I don't think so. I'd have to really dive into that more. You do two things. One, you find Brad Pitt. Yes. You, you find Jonah Hill. Yes. You moneyball that you thing. Money. You moneyball it. You moneyball that. That's money it. Ball. Where's Chris Pratt? He can come. He's a lefty. You're not he's losing. Saw him. I'm on Hatterberg. That's Chris Pratt. Might not win the World Series, but you're not losing. Very true. You want to get to top five before bets? Ooh, top five. This was a good one. This was a good one. All right. So we did our top five TV shows. This was really tough. And I realized there were a couple that I didn't put in there that I should have put in there, but that's the way it works. Number one, the best show, TV show that's ever been invented. It's not around anymore. It's Old Sports Center. Old Sports okay. Center, where they just talked about sports, old- where I could just watch sports. I'd watch it back to back three times. I'd watch it before I go to school. I, it would, it was my lullaby at night. Old Sports Center, Stuart Scott, Dan Patrick, Trey Wingo, Keith Olbermann's absolutely freaked out, and he's a psychopath now. But even back then, he wasn't that bad. I can go down the list. Linda Cohn. I mean, it, just a star-studded lineup. New Sports Center is trash. Was it the Old Sports Center or was it Stuart Scott? It was Old Sports Center. It was the format plus the personality. Mm-hmm. Kenny Maine. Come on, guy, guy we've had on, on the show before we got here. The Office, number two, come on. The United States one, not the Ricky Gervais one. The Ricky Gervais one is mid. I'm sorry. Game of Thrones, number three, obviously. <laughs> it has dragons. It's medieval stuff. And it was wrote really, really well. And then Dexter at five. I thought this was one of the greatest shows I've ever seen. Uh, I'd break and bat at four, then Dexter at five. But I realized right after this, I did not put the Chappelle show or South Park in here. Yes. And I don't know how to forgive myself. Not a big friends guy. Not a huge Seinfeld guy, 
That's my top five. All right, here's, Don't at me, but also Here's my me. top five. Guess what, guys? I messed up. <laughs> What'd you forget? I messed up. I forgot South Park. Yeah, you South did. Park is one of my top five yeah, shows. I didn't say For anything. sure. Where would you put it? it? Um, I would put South, uh, South Park at two. And get rid of what? Um, I would just move everything Everything down. Everything down one? I'd move everything down. So buy Dexter. So Dexter would be Dexter. Dexter, would be, Dexter well, you're dead. Um, well, I'd dress up as Dexter this Halloween for one time. It's pretty cool. So I'd go South Park one just because it is absolutely hilarious. I'm, I'm not going to go. Yeah. So you're not going off your graphic. <laughs> You're going South Park Are one. You you're not going. This real I can go off the you're, graphic. That's fine. I'm saying I would have put. I would have put South. You would have put two. South Park. But tell them your yeah. graphic. But all right. So I'm oh, going go Office one there. because it's the Office. If you don't like the Office, I probably don't like you as a person. American or UK. Not you, Jones. Yeah, I do like you. American or UK. American. What? Yeah. Ricky Gervais. It's decent. It's not better than the American. Okay. One. But it's at least decent. It's for you. decent. Yeah. Um, two. Breaking Bad. I mean, Walter White. I'm. <laughs> That show was breaking barriers. That show was one of the few shows yeah. that didn't get worse the longer. Yes. It Game of Thrones, I mean, dragons, That's hot cool. chicks, big guys with swords fighting each other. I okay. love it. So you do like Game of Thrones. Yeah, I do. Yeah, yeah. So, There's another reason. I do. But for How I Met Your Mother, great show. Good show. Great show. It, they kind of wrote great show. Good show. Um, um, can I just do my top no, five? No, I'm saying it's a good show. It's a good choice. Every two seconds. No, go ahead. It'd be great. Go awesome. Ahead. So for How I Met Your Mother, a phenomenal show. They rushed the ending a little bit, but shout out Druber for putting me on it in college, dude. Watch almost every Shout out Druber. Um, shout out watch Druber. Almost, every, almost every episode of it. And Dexter, man. The, the, oh God. You're the first Dexter time I watched fan. Dexter, dressed up. I was dating a girl at the time. I dressed up as Dexter. She, she dressed up one of the people I killed. Um, That's she's still good. alive. That'll be good. To try. <laughs> so, yeah. Wow. She's still alive. Um, so, yeah. I mean, it's wow. Alive. South Park would be in there, though. I love all the office love. Dick. For sure. The man, office love. Good. Here we go. Let's go five to one. Five entourage. Okay, I don't watch this show as much as I used to, but the combination of Johnny Drama and Ari Gold, guys, that's a dynamic. I'm, I'm a big Jeremy Piven guy. Well, look, I've seen every episode of Entourage double digit times, so it has to be on there. And somewhere. there was an Entourage star that was in one of the movies from the Daily Wire. Shut in. Make sure you check it out. Ooh, fact. Four, Twilight Zone. Used to watch these all the time with my dad. I still think it's one of the greatest shows of all time. Three, here's where we have to have a conversation. True Detective, season one. But I understand that, that you good. can't just, can't just pick you seasons. can't just pick seasons, just right? Work. Okay, because if it, I think True Detective season one is the greatest season of television in history. But because we have to take the show as a whole, I will still put this on my list, and I will have it at three, even though seasons two and three do drag it down. Okay, have I clarified that enough? You clarified it. Number two, Game of Thrones. All Game of Thrones had to do to be number one on my list was really not even make a last season. That and they could have been number one. Just ended Make there. it, yeah. You know, here's the problem with what they did with Game of Thrones. Everybody who loved Game of Thrones knew they weren't going to be happy at the end. Yeah. This isn't a happy ending show, and we were all fine with that. The, what the biggest sin they committed was going off of the story arcs that they spent seven seasons creating. Don't abandon the story arcs of Jon Snow and Daenerys and Bran Stark. Okay, that's where they really messed up. And number one, The Office. I love Ricky Gervais. I really like the UK Office, but I'm talking about the American Office. It is the greatest show. I fall asleep to it with my wife every night mm. what else is there to be said honorable mention curb your enthusiasm colombo and yellowstone oh, i have two honorable mentions arrested development the writing in that show is you like elite. that one? i love arrested development it's my type of humor and then macgyver 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 I, my two honorable mentions. flame one would be spongebob um two sponge would, what would be new girl okay new girl new girl i get girl. spongebob you're kind of big in there. seasons yeah new, seasons, new, new girl new girl's a good show yeah but you know what else is a, is a great show? And Flaming Dragon. One? When I walk over to the board of emotional justice, friendship, hatred, life, love, Levin. And disappointment for me. Inflation, Don't deflation, Don't put that in the air, David. No, you guys are running away with it. Excited yesterday. Oh, it's uh, I would like to personally oh, we teaming extend my thank you to the Texas Rangers. Pick. You went down 3-0 in the first inning. What did you do? You came back in the bottom of the first, and you dropped a six-piece with two biscuits and mashed potatoes. Really excited about that against <laughs> Syndergaard. The Brewers as well, one to nothing win over the Braves. Listen, it hurt my heart, but it helped my wallet. Okay? Hurt my heart, but it helped my wallet. So, I'm going to abs, minus one and a half. I think they're coming out skating hot. Gordon Bombay talked to him, what spoke to him before the series. What the, the greatest. Right <laughs> I don't know what plane. Is that doing. not skating? I mean, oh, am I wrong? Something. That's something. Tell me it's a yeah, Wicked Witch of the East, bro. Tell me I'm wrong. That's something, yeah. So I'm going uh, abs minus one and a half. That's plus 102. Maybe it's a one goal game late. Abs get an empty netter to go up to. That'd be See? super cool. Or just See? destroy them. You're at home. It's in Colorado. Everybody's excited. The Air Force Base is in Colorado Springs. A lot of emotional things going on. Let's finish it. Denver, Denver. Let's go, Denver. Milwaukee Brewers. 
minus one and a half. The Braves are throwing the Davidson kid who threw two innings the other day and was throwing batting practice, which means he'll probably throw a perfect game today. But I'm going to take the Brewers, minus one and a half at home, plus 160. Trying to move up those units. Big day yesterday. If we get to 16 and 12, I may give something away on tomorrow's show. Cone, what do you got? Marlins, first five, minus a half run. That's going off at minus 115. Let's figure it out because I need to bounce back. And then Avs, Blues. Look, I want some action in that one as well. I want over... One and a half goals in the first period. Are you? Let me ask you this: Are you worried about the pad being unlucky? This page of the pad, hmm? Like the page <laughs> he said, the hmm? pad? Um, no, no, no. You got a new pad, look, didn't look, you? Look, look. You don't question. No, you, you even said, said no. You book. brought this no, up. What happened was I mouthed it. I mouthed it. I talk. I talked about it. I didn't come in with an O and O mentality that day, and that's what. And I'm still reeling. Okay, it was that. the mentality, not the certain page. It's not the sheet. book. It's not okay. the page. Okay, well, I was just asking. No my mentality, and it won't happen again. No dark energy. In I that just didn't know if maybe huh? you got that. You maybe bought that from like Sauron. Don't you put that on me, Ricky Bobby? Bobby? I'm asking. Don't you put that on me, Ricky? Can you hit Bobby? the flaming dragon button for okay, me? Okay, hold on. No, it's not. This is flaming dragon. It's not you Friday. You get a whole day. day. That's not good. You get a whole day of it. Do, y'all don't call me that. It's like Selfish? Do before my it's not Flaming Selfish. Dragon. Anyway. And Churlish. Anyways. Hey. Your boy's been kind of hot these last couple of days. Oh, yeah. Matter. You're running away with oh, it. Oh, no day, Dave. You're running away oh, no with it. You've been hot. You're running zero away zero. with it, man. Probably you know what? Know today hey, for the, sure. One of these bets is like playing in basketball. You walk out and you've hit three threes in a row. What is it time for? Heat check. Time for a heat check bet. All right. Give me the Yankees. Alternative run line here. You got to really go down in the fan duel. What is this? Minus two and a half. Okay. Give me minus two and a half. I believe it's plus 120. It is. Mm-hmm. Facing the Orioles. They got a kid on the mound who's not that great. I believe they won six to one. Josh Donaldson. So what are you saying? What are the Yankees going to do? They're going to win seven to one. They're going to win seven. Wait, they have to win seven to one? No. They have to win by two and a half. They have to win oh, by two. You got a minus two and a half at plus 120. Okay. Yeah. They got to win by dangerous two Dangerous man. You've been and living then, dangerously. I mean, look. I mean, I've been betting with the Yanks. Yeah. The kids are hot. Why not? They're winning games. No Aaron Judge tonight. There's no Aaron Judge yesterday. That one's hitting for sure. What's your second one? <laughs> okay, that's fine. That doesn't affect me. Sorry. Um, anyways, <laughs> give me abs. Uh, uh, result money line. So if this game goes into overtime, I automatically lose. They have to. So win it's gotta this. be regulation. Yeah, they have to win okay. this game in regulation. All right. So I'm taking them minus 140 at home. So you know we'll see. Hey, to show up, Yank. Come on, baby, let's go. Baby Cone, kids hot. 13 and four baby overall. Cone's hot. Now he can't officially win this because he can't talk and oh, give his that. speech. True that. Right, he's 13 and four. He's 10 and four overall in the month. Right. And. Replacement Cone got a retweet from Ben Shapiro today, and mm. a lot of people are asking, why does Replacement Cone not get, get bets? And is that plasticism towards Replacement Cone, which is obviously the racism of plastics toward the cone because we're not giving him a bet, maybe because he's orange? I don't know. Next month, we're going to start giving him bets so everybody stop panicking. Baby Cone has taken the Tampa Bay, Carolina, over six and a half goals, minus 135 tonight. Guys, 49, 41, and two on the month. We already started football season, 231, 182, and 6 overall. And congratulations, Canyon Reed Brock, yes. Hall of Famer. Went back and crunched the numbers. You did it, buddy. Sent him a message uh, after we went back and checked it. He said, this is more. This is cooler than when I passed the bar, and it's definitely going on my LinkedIn. Dangerous. So, so, so excited for you. And you want to talk about excitement? Guess what? You want guests? You want big-time, hard-hitting sports guests? We got Ron Rivera from the Washington Commanders coming on tomorrow to talk some NFL. So put that one in your little calendar. And then we got Danny Cannell coming on Thursday. It's a who's who, where's Waldo, great Gatsby situation for the rest of the week. Really excited about that. And we got David Pollock coming on as well and some more great guests. So get ready for tomorrow. It's going to be awesome. Booster Club, like I said, can you read Brock? 8-0, 8-0, that streak keeps going. We want to see who can get the most in a row. He's got Tyler Hero over 14 and a half points, plus, or under 14 and a half points, I'm sorry, plus 100. Wildcat Cubs fan, devastating loss last night. Mm. You went with the Angels. I went with the Rangers. Rangers ended up winning. You were 7-0. and We're back to 0-0, zero and zero, but I love, I love where your head's at on social media. You got up this morning, yeah. and you decided to come yeah, back. Yeah, he knows what's going on. You decided up. to come back for the fight. Sometimes you get wounded. You got to go back in the fight. He uh, wants the abs lose over 6 and a half. Uh, bet buds there with baby cone. You got to respect it. Boring Florida man, four and zero. Not so boring anymore. Wants the Heat minus two. Trevor Robinson, who is four and zero, wants the Panthers Lightning goal in first ten over a half. So they got to score in the first ten minutes of first period minus one seventy five. JD Stone nineties four and zero seven and a half Ks for McClanahan against the Tigers. That's minus one twenty two. JT Bryan came in the Booster Club hot. Uh, it's four and zero. Wants the Lightning plus one and a half. Oh. Riley Zach nineteen three and zero. He came in hot too. Panthers money line minus one sixty. Revco. 250 wants the the uh, Miami 
First five, money line. Uh, that's going to be the Marlins. J- Huddy's 3-0, and wants the Avs minus 1.5. That's uh, plus 110. He's bet buds with me, I believe. Yes. Uh, he got a little bit better odds than me. And then Chai Sportsnet. Welcome to the fam, buddy. He wants the Angels plus one he taught, plus one twenty five, and they he says they will, beat, will the beat the Rangers. We appreciate you guys joining us. The Booster Cup, Blaine. How was the chat today? Good. I believe we hit a thousand. Good. That we should expect that every day. Excellence isn't just a thing on a Tuesday. We want it Monday, went Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Because why not? Huh? But make sure you guys are following us on TikTok, Instagram, Twitter, all that stuff. We got some great content coming. Make sure uh, you're also subscribed on YouTube as well and thedailywire.com. And like our run of not having NFL head coaches on the show, even though the show is really young tomorrow because we got Ron Rivera, we're going, going, gone. <laughs>